Hello, Dr. Brad Hulsebus here, and welcome to another edition of Ask the Chiropractor. Ask the Chiropractor is my little podcast that I do. When someone has a question about chiropractic or chiropractic care, I try to answer. I'm a chiropractor here in Rockford, Illinois. I'm a proud graduate of Palmer College of Chiropractic, and I'm happy to be the team chiropractor of the Rockford Ice Hogs. Let's dive into it. Hi, thanks for tuning in for another episode of Ask the Chiropractor. Today I want to talk a little bit about mental health. Now maybe you never thought about chiropractic and mental health. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how chiropractors think about mental health and how chiropractic adjustments could play a role in mental health. Maybe something you never heard or thought of before. But I also want to talk a little bit about my other degree in wellness. I am a certified wellness practitioner. So I want to talk a little bit what I know about the wellness realm too. So let's dive into this. Mental health. Did you know that the switchboard of the brain is called the midbrain? What I mean by the switchboard is the nerves come into the body, into the spine, up the spine, to the midbrain. Then the midbrain organizes the nerve signals and puts them in the brain. And then from the brain down. So we see a lot of people today that come in and they have horrible neck posture. They call it straight neck, military neck. And today, you probably heard of it more of tech neck. It comes from when I'm doing this all the time. But it also comes from reading books. It also comes from sitting behind a desk, typing. Whether you're standing or sitting, it's the same effect. Your shoulders are rolled forward and your head sticking forward. And this ruins the natural curve of your neck, the nice round curve your neck's supposed to have. And being that, it's hard to get a little kid to sit down and read a bunch of books. But it's really easy to get a little kid to sit down and hold an iPad for hours. So even though books cause this tech neck also, the odds of a little kids grabbing books and sitting there for two to three hours compared to grabbing an iPad and sitting there for two to three hours, the iPad's much more realistic, right? And so what's happening is these kids are developing this worse and worse neck posture all the time. And see the cord, the spinal cord coming down the neck has these ligaments that hang out to the side. They're called dentate ligaments. Maybe you've heard of me discuss this in previous episodes. But the spinal cord isn't going to move. It's not going to, it's not going to budge around. It's going to hang on to the side and it's not going to go anywhere because these ligaments are so strong hanging on the walls and the spinal canal that your spinal cord really doesn't shift up and down. But when you take a nice round curve and you make it straight, something's got to give because that cord's going to be in a lot more pressure. And because the cord itself won't slide up and down, the only thing left to do is to pull down on the midbrain. In the base of your skull, you have a thing called the foramen magnum that sits in the bottom of your skull, a little hole. That's where the spinal cord comes down. But if there's too much pressure and too much stress over the years, the midbrain will actually start to get pulled down into that hole as well. And now what you have is like a, a clogged duct, right? Now the midbrain's under tremendous amount of stress. So now as the signals from the environment come in to the body, and the body has to perceive these and go up to the brain, get processed, and then go to the brain, to the midbrain, to the brain, and then from the brain to the midbrain down out, the midbrain is now in a tremendous amount of stress, physical stress. It's literally being pushed on. It's literally having mechanically stress hit it. And now that midbrain is having a problem is interpreting the signals and interpreting how you react with your environments. And so as chiropractors, we, we work really hard on restoring the curve, getting the curve to come back, restoring your posture, but also upper cervical care, upper cervical meaning the top two bones in your neck. We do adjustments there. Because we've been able to prove that when you adjust those bones, you can actually literally push the midbrain back up, back where it belongs. So you've heard a lot of this in the avenue of athletes, because athletes get a lot of press, a lot of, a lot of crack coverage. You take, if you ever want to look up Google search Jim McMahon from the 85 Bears and the chiropractor, they talk all about how they pop this back up. And McMahon described it like a toilet bowl flushing in his brain, all the spinal fluid regenerating, moving around. You can see not only does it create pressure against that midbrain, but now you have the inability to flush the brain out. The spinal fluid isn't refreshing, it isn't regenerating. One of the common things that we see when people complain of this is headaches. They have really bad headaches because the vein flow isn't coming out of the brain. Now, a long time ago, we thought it was the arteries. But today with new technology, we know it's not the blood flow going in, it's the blood flow coming out. It's getting the toxins out of the brain area, the cranial area, away from the brain, and away from where they would cause damage and into the blood where they could be filtered. It's getting clogged up, it's getting backed up. So you have this head with a tremendous amount of pressure. You have a midbrain being jammed, being pushed against. 
And you have the toxics in the brain not being able to excrete from the brain, building up over and over again. And what alleviates that? Upper cervical chiropractic adjustments. I don't know anything else that does. I study, I research a lot, but I don't know anything else that works as quickly, as effective, and minimal as far as you don't have to have a surgery, you don't have to have anything like that. You go in, you see the chiropractor, they adjust your C1, C2, you walk out, you feel better. It's not like it's a major ordeal to have all this done. Now, Dr. Longyear down in Jacksonville, Florida, he's doing this under motion MRI machines where we're witnessing this occur. Talk about mental health, chiropractics can help. I mean, if that's the cause. We adjust the C1, C2, and we fix that neck posture, and we do stretches to counterbalance the things that create this pressure. So by removing the pressure on the brainstem and fixing the neck posture, chiropractic can help a lot. Now let me switch hats for a second. Let me put on my certified chiropractic wellness practitioner hat. What does that mean? That means we studied hunter and gather tribes all across the world and even read like Native American diaries and studied what the human being needs genetically, both chemically, physically, and emotionally, and how the chiropractor could play a role and influence that through eat right, move right, think right, as Dr. Chestnut would say. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about dopamine. Dopamine versus serotonin. See, when your brain gives out certain chemicals, one of them is called dopamine, and dopamine means pleasure. So I'm going to grab my phone and I'm going to look at a quick 30 second video. That's dopamine. That's a quick burst of dopamine. I'm going to open up a bag of, of junk food. I'm going to eat that. And it's laced with MSG. Now, normally when I say MSG, people automatically assume Chinese food from 15, 20 years ago. But let's move past that. Let's, 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 just, let's pretend like that's not the end all be all with MSG because it's not. MSG has got a thousand names. Go on to Google, type in different names for MSG. And you're going to find so much food laced with MSG. It's alarming. And what MSG does, it's a neuroexotoxin. Neuroexotoxin means it's neurology. Exo means it's excitatory. And toxin means it's not good stuff. So what you have is you have this neuroexotoxin. What it does is when you eat these junk food, it tells your brain the little, do little dopamine. Hey, man, this is good. Here's a little dopamine. And so you get that dopamine kicking in. But then when it's done, when you're done eating those foods, it kills the brain cells. Like it gets rid of the evidence. So that's not good for mental health, right? Killing brain cells can never be good for mental health. We get this dopamine addiction. Dopamine's pleasure. Serotonin is going to be long-term happiness. And you can't make dopamine at the same time you make serotonin. It has to be one or the other. Matter of fact, in today's NBA, I'm told that every NBA team has at least one mental health provider because... If I'm a 22-year-old NBA player, multi-millionaire, my whole life could be pleasure, right? Pleasure this, quick pleasure here, quick, I get the headphones, I got the iPad in front of me, I get the junk food going in, uh, just everything's my pleasure. And there's no long-term serotonin mix. There's no happiness. In today's world, where kids can't watch a whole movie, they can only last, it's just that dopamine. And that's just not good for mental health. It's just bad to be addicted to dopamine like that because you're totally lacking the serotonin. Okay, and the one last topic I want to hit on this is the quality of our food. The quality of our food's gotten so poor, we lack amino acids that are found in omega-3s. The omega-3 fish oils are huge. And not only that, but we have this boom of vegetarian and veganism. And you can't get two of the essential amino acids from, from plant sources. You just can't. So if you're full vegan or full vegetarian, you are just deprived on your omega-3s. And when you're short on omega-3, some people say you take fish oil for cholesterol, or take fish oil for this, take fish oil for that. What happens is if you're omega-3 deficient and you're too many omega-6s, no, side note, omega-6s come from eating grains or animals that eat grains. Omega-3s come from eating grass and algae and animals that eat grass and algae, right? So today, if you eat uh, uh, wild caught fish, you're getting your omega-3s. If you're eating grass-fed beef, you're getting your omega-3s. If you're eating normal beef from the grocery store, they eat corn, that's omega-6s, you're not getting any. And if you're eating farm-raised fish, they eat corn too. By the way, don't eat farm-raised fish. But if you're eating farm-raised fish, they're eating corn too. I lived in Illinois and Iowa most of my life. I've been around a lot of corn in my days. I've never seen a fish come out of the Mississippi River and grab a year of corn and go back in the water. They're not even they're supposed to, so you eat that stuff. So now you have low omega-3s. And if you're a vegetarian or vegan, you're not getting any of any type at all, period. And then you could tell me flaxseed oil. Flaxseed oil has only four of the six aminos. Go ahead and leave your comments below. I'll answer them. Krill oil is good. Not good for the environment, but good. Cod liver oil is good. And then, of course, fish oil is good. That's how you get your omega-3s because today's diet lacks that. 
And if you tell me you're eating wild salmon, you'd have to eat 18 whole what salmons a day in order to get what you get in the supplements. I don't know, I, think, I don't think bears even eat that much. We're deprived of omega-3. So what does it do when I take omega-3? So why do I take omega-3? It's not for cholesterol, it's not for this. It's for neurological inflammation. When your omega-3s are deprived, you get become neurologically inflamed, you become neurologically toxic. And neurologically toxic does not sound good for mental health either. So there's my big three, okay? You got to get your neck looked at. You got to get that neck posture looking good. You got to get those upper two bones in your neck checked. You got to stop with the dopamine addiction. You got to find a book. You got to go for a walk. You got to get out in nature. You got to do that. How many times in these podcasts have I said the number one thing you can do to be healthier is go for a 30-minute walk every day? When you're in that 30-minute walk, you're not producing dopamine unless you're looking at your phone. Please don't look at your phone. All right? So you do your 30-minute walk, you do better. And lastly, you got to get your fish oil. Get your neck checked, cut down the dopamine, try to find some serotonin, try to get out, do some other things, get your fish oil up. That's how chiropractors look at mental health. Thanks, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have a question about chiropractic or chiropractic care, you could be the next question and ask the chiropractor. Go to my website, Rockford DC, that's R-O-C-K-F-O-R dc.com and go ahead and leave me a message there or wherever you're listening or watching this video leave a comment there and we'll get back to you all right everybody stay healthy and remember if you have a question about chiropractic or chiropractic care the only person that's qualified in the world to answer that question would be a chiropractor make sure you ask them don't ask an orthopedic don't ask a dentist don't ask a family doctor only a chiropractor knows whether or not you would make a good chiropractic candidate thank you (music) 